Shalom of Racha. Parashat B'chukosei tells us about the idea of reward and punishment. In B'chukosei Telechu, if we'll follow the duties, obligations, the laws, the mitzvahs, the ordinances of the Torah, then things will be good. When Atati Gishmechem Be'etam will receive the rains and the land will deliver its fruits and will be victorious in our wars. And if Khalila the Hefech, the opposite, if we won't follow the ways of Hashem that are delineated in the Torah, then things will be bad and we won't receive the blessing of the land and we'll be, uh, we'll be defeated in our wars. And this seems to be in deep tension with the very first instruction that we find in Torah Shabbat Peh. In the third Mishnah, in Pirkei Avot, after two introductory Mishnayot, we find an instruction given by Antignois Ish Soichai. And he says, don't be Avadim, servants, who serve Hashem in order to receive pras, a reward, but rather serve Hashem without intention to receive reward. How can we be told this instruction? It flies in the face of the Psukim in Parashas B'chukosai and in several other parashiyos that tell us if you'll do the mitzvahs, you'll have it good. If you won't do the mitzvahs, you won't have it good. What, we're supposed to ignore the Torah? The Torah says very clearly, do the mitzvahs, you'll have it good. We're not supposed to have that in mind. The Torah says it explicitly. Rather, it seems that the word pras literally means a portion, a slice, like a pusa, a portion. Says the Mishnah, don't have in mind to receive a portion. A portion is like an incentive, something superficial, something that God says, if you'll do this, you, you'll get this. It's an incentive. No. The idea is, the entire Torah leads us, brings us to closeness with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The giving of the Torah is translated by the Mishnah as a wedding day. Yom Chatu Nasai is Yom Matan Torah. A day of ultimate closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what's latent in the Torah. Says the Ramchal, Sechar Mitzvah, Mitzvah. The reward of the mitzvah is the closeness to Hashem itself. That's how the Ramchal in a, a sefer called Kinas Hashem Tzvakais explains. Not just receiving more mitzvot, but rather the closeness that's latent in the mitzvot. Says the Torah, if you'll keep the laws, then Hashem will be close to us. The result, the expression, the way in which we feel the closeness of Hashem is through all the bounty, all the goodness, of this world. The victory in the wars is part of our closeness to Hashem. And if we don't do the mitzvot, then we'll be distant. And how will that distance be expressed? Chalila, in drought and famine, and not having the bounty of the world, and being defeated in wars. When we have that in mind, closeness to Hashem, that's what the Torah is all about. So of course we need to have in mind the goodness of the world but within the framing of closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then that's exactly the right kavana. That's exactly the right intention, the one that Hashem desires. He doesn't desire it to be an incentive, something superficial, something external, but He does desire the closeness. And that's why we read Parshas B'chu Kaysai every year before Shavuos. The Gemara says in Megillah, Ezra enacted this, in order that the curses of the year should end. What are those curses? We need to put everything, the good and the bad, into a framing of a relationship with Hashem, which is what the Torah is all about. This entire edifice of Sechava Oynesh, reward and punishment, of course, that's where the Torah directs us towards, but within a framing of a connection, a relationship with Hashem. And then, the intention of receiving all the good and avoiding all of those curses is of course what Hashem wants because He wants the closeness. Says David HaMelech in Tehillim, Kirvas Elohim li toiv. All the goodness of the world is Kirvas Elohim. Halavai, we should internalize this message as we approach Shavuos to take all the goodness in the world and place it into a context of a relationship with the ultimate good, the source of all good, of Hashem, of the Divine. And we should merit to experience that goodness that we yearn so much 
to have the goodness to defeat our enemies and to enjoy the bounty of the land all within the context of closeness to Hashem. We should all have a beautiful Shabbat.